Hi, my name is Bo Hansen and I work at Logico2. We work with CO2 safety. In the United States, there have been a number of new safety codes and norms set for CO2. You have the NBIC, you have the NFPA 55, you have the IFC 2015, the CGA, and of course the OSHA. We at Logico2 believe we have a very good solution for these codes. Having worked 25 years with CO2 safety systems, in our experience, a CO2 safety system is never better than the way it's been installed. Therefore, we insist on having certified installers. Here is a general description of the Logico2 CO2 safety solution. It's comprised of two different types of CO2 sensors, horn strobes, a central unit to which you can connect up to eight sensors and a remote connection box. With these components, due to their flexibility, it's possible to solve all our customers' different CO2 safety issues, irrespectively of the environments. In order to make a proper recon, you have to check where the different distribution points are. Gas bottles, bulk CO2 tank, BIBs or bag in the boxes, and if there is draft beer being served, where the beer cooler is located. In areas where the CO2 is stored or distributed in below grade locations, such as low floors and basements, it is essential to have the warning lamps and horn strobes before the entrance to the area. Since CO2 is a heavy gas that accumulates in the lowest areas, filling an area from the floor and up, therefore it is our recommendation to mount the CO2 alarm sensor at 12 inches or 30 centimeters from the floor. This way the awareness of a leak is made as early as possible ensuring time to deal with the leak as well as avoiding unnecessary loss of CO2. This also harmonizes with existing European legislation. If you have multiple sensors in a system, it is our recommendation to have a central unit mounted as well. It monitors up to eight sensors displaying the sensor readings and alarms. If someone tampers with the sensor that is connected to the unit, it will also make an alert. The Logico2 CO2 safety system is comprised of two different types of sets. The MK10, which can be used as a standalone unit. Also, the MK9, which has a central unit, to which you can connect up to eight sensors. The Logico2 MK10 CO2 safety set is comprised of a sensor, mounted on a mounting plate for easy installation. We have a horn strobe marked with CO2 so that you know what it's for. It has a light indication and a sound indication. All the screws for mounting the sensors are provided. A protection bar for protecting the sensor the signs to be mounted next to the sensor, indicating the functionality of the alarms, as well as a sign to be mounted permanently next to the horn strobe. There's a quick guide describing in a simple way how to install the system, as well as a proper manual that goes into depth of the installation. The unit has a plug lock. This is made out of metal covered with plastic and it makes the power supply tamper proof. Before you make an installation, be sure to make a test. You connect the system
As you see, the system makes a self-check, seeing that all the functionality is correct. Here we have the Logico 2 MK9 set with all its components. It's comprised of a sensor with a display, a central unit also with a larger display, being able to connect eight sensors to it, a horn strobe, all the cables necessary to make the installation, power supply, a plug lock, the signs to be mounted next to the central unit in Spanish and in English telling you what to do in case of an alarm, as well as the sign that's to be mounted next to the horn strobe. There is a quick guide to give you an easy beginning of the installation, as well as an in-depth user's manual explaining everything that you need to make a proper installation. And the kit comes as well with all the screws necessary to mount the products on the wall. Now, when you've taken the products out of the box, you want to make sure that everything is working properly. So, you connect it. What happens then is, the central unit starts showing in the display, the sensor starts heating up, saying that it's ID1, in other words, one sensor connected. After the self-test and diagnostics, the central unit will start showing the measured value from the sensor. Both the MK9 and the MK10 are of course waterproof. In the case of the MK9, the air input into the sensor is even mounted on the back side of the sensor giving extra protection. It's also designed in order to be able to route the cables on the back side of the sensor into the cable ducts, making for a much cleaner and nicer installation. When it comes to the central unit, since it monitors the sensors connected to the unit, and it can be up to eight sensors, if anybody tampers with a sensor, for example, disconnecting it, now it's disconnected, the central unit will immediately say, sensor not found. And it tells you which sensor it's not found. And it also explains that you should follow the cables over to the sensor and see that they are all connected properly. Find where the fault is. Mute the sound, go and look, find the fault, Sensor starts, makes its test again. And you clear the alarm by pressing the reset button until cleared is displayed. When you have found a place for mounting the sensor that is within the stipulated 15 feet or five meters from the distribution point, you can use the box that the MK10 was delivered in to find the correct height that the sensor should be mounted at. That is to say 12 inches or 30 centimeters from the floor to the bottom of the sensor. The box is 12 inches long. Mount the protection bar over the sensor so that it does not get damaged. Try and route the cables in cable ducts on the wall up over the ceiling to a power outlet and to the horn strobe that is mounted outside the room or the danger zone. 
The yellow sign for the MK10 sensor should be mounted in a permanent fashion above the sensor. The sign for the horn strobe must be placed next to the horn strobe. Don't forget to mount the plug lock on the power supply in order to avoid tampering. When you have found a place for mounting the sensor that is within the stipulated 15 feet or 5 meters from the distribution point, you can use the box that the MK9 was delivered in to find a correct height that the sensor should be mounted at, that is to say 12 inches or 30 centimeters from the floor to the bottom of the sensor. The box is 12 inches long. Try and route the cables behind the sensor into the cable ducts on the wall up over the ceiling to a power outlet and to the horn strobe that is mounted outside the room or the danger zone, as well as to the central unit. The central unit has to be mounted outside of the danger zone, preferably in the manager's office, so that everyone knows where to find it. Mount the what to do signs next to it in a permanent fashion so that they do not fall down. The sign for the horn strobe must be placed next to the horn strobe. And don't forget to write down on the bottom of the signs where each sensor is placed. And don't forget to mount the plug lock on the power supply in order to avoid any tampering. If you need to extend a cable, all you do is disconnect the splitter and add the needed length of the standard Cat5 cable with RJ45 connectors. If you need to add more horn strobes, you replace the one-to-one -one splitters with one-to-two splitters or one-to-four splitters and add the extra horn strobes that are needed. A question that often comes up is the cable lengths. The cable lengths are not really critical since the system runs on a 12 to 24 volts. Eliminating this problem up to 1500 feet or 500 meters is really not an issue. When you have an existing Logical 2 CO2 safety system and you want to expand it by adding another sensor, you install a so-called kit. This is an MK9 kit. It includes all that is necessary for expanding. Note, it comes as an ID2, meaning that the existing sensor, of course, has ID1, and this is ID2. It contains an extra connector and it also contains the horn strobe with all the screws and cables and the signage that is necessary for the expansion. We open the lid of the central unit carefully. We find the dip switch on the left side and in accordance with the manual we switch the number one dip and the sensor will automatically register that it's measuring two sensors. If we would add a third sensor for example we go to the manual again and we find that by moving the second dip the unit will register three sensors. Here we have the splitter going from the power supply to the central unit and the first sensor. Disconnect the power from the one to two connector and the sensors. Replace it with a one to four that comes in the CO2 safety kit and add the sensor that we want to add. When you want to expand the CO2 safety kits with a third or a fourth or a fifth or a sixth or a seventh or an eighth sensor, you go in on the dip row and for example in this case 
You want to have an ID for, you follow the instructions in the manual, you take the fourth dip and put it up, and now this is an ID for. To change the ID of the MK10, you dismount the mounting plate, open the sensor to the electronics, and then you simply move the dip switch number two from ID one to two up to ID eight. And when that is finished, you close the unit and you're finished. If you need the all weather alternative instead of the standard horn strobe, simply Disconnect the units. Connect the warning lamp and the siren. To mount the warning lamp and the siren, you simply open the units and mount screws in the indentations that are clearly marked on the inside. If you want to expand the CO2 safety system with a remote control box in order to connect to external fire alarms or to control fans, you simply go in on the blue side, the, the cables going to the horn strobes, disconnect the one-to-one -one cable, connect the existing horn strobe and the blue connector from the remote control box. Here you can see inside the remote control box that we have two dry contacts, which are switching relays. And you can choose if you want the high alarm or the low alarm to control the different dry contacts, making the system very flexible. Remember, with the Logico 2 CO2 safety system, not only do you fulfill all US safety codes, as well as all international safety codes, but you do so with the most cost-effective system on the market today, both to purchase and to install. And because of the patented self-calibration feature, which makes the system virtually maintenance-free, also the most cost-effective to own. But remember, a system isn't better than the way it's installed. The installation is the certified installer's signature. Be safe.